Hi everybody, it's Steve Rizzetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com Guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. And here we are, part three of our eight-part series we're calling Basic Training with Premiere Elements. And we've got a project here with a couple of assets or some video clips here in the Project Assets panel. Now, as you edit in Premiere Elements, about 99%, the well, vast majority of what you're doing is going to be simply editing. It's going to be simply dragging clips to the timeline, arranging in order so that they tell a story, and then trimming off the extra or the parts that you don't need or don't want. Adding clips to the timeline is fairly simple. You just pretty much drag them from Project Assets to the timeline in the order that you want them to appear. Now the timeline ripples, which means that if I decided partway through this clip, you know what, as a matter of fact, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You can zoom in or out using this slider in the upper right hand corner of the timeline, or you can use the plus and minus key on your keyboard to zoom in and out. There we go. Okay. If I decided I wanted to add a clip partway through this movie, I can drag it down, put it in here, and the program ripples. In other words, let me zoom out a little bit. It took the clip that was right there, moves it down there. If I were to remove a clip from the timeline by selecting it and pressing the delete button, it snaps shut, right? It moves left to fill in the gap. And that's basic, simple rippling. However, rippling also has some characteristics you want to understand and have some control over. More on that in just a minute. Okay, so while we're editing our movie, we may have a longer clip that we want to take something off one end or the other. To do that, we're going to trim. To trim a clip, all you need to do is just hover your mouse over the beginning or end of the clip. If that little bracket there is facing to the left, when you click and drag, you're going to take away some of the end of that clip. If that bracket is facing to the right, you're going to be taking off some of the clip to the right. That's simple trimming. You notice, by the way, that as I trim, the program is going to give me a preview of my timeline. Let me just widen this a little bit. And it will show me, as I click and drag, the new endpoint. There is on the left my new endpoint as I trim off. At the same time as it shows me the beginning point of the next clip. So that way I can get pretty precise in my editing. That's a very nice feature. And you notice that as I trim, the program is still rippling, right? It's moving together. Or if I were to add some of the, the video that I've taken away by untrimming, the timeline expands there. So the ripple feature works in both directions. Where it gets a little tricky is when you've got two tracks of video. Say for instance, I've got a layer of video here, or I've got layers of audio or something above my existing video. By the way, don't get confused if you don't see the thumbnails here on these video clips. These tracks can be untoggled and toggled depending on whether you want to see those thumbnails or whether you want to preserve some vertical space. All right, so I've got a layer of video and a layer of audio on top of my current movie. Now, what happens if I insert a clip now into this movie on track one? Look at what happens. Not only does it insert into the movie, but it also splits the clip on the track above that. Okay, so I'm going to control Z or command Z to undo that move. What happens if I don't want that to happen? What if I don't want a clip on one of the other tracks to separate when I insert into my movie? Well, there's a simple keyboard shortcut for that. If you just hold down the alt or the option key on your keyboard, when you add a clip, it limits the ripple to only the track where you're adding the clip. Watch when I let go. I'm holding it right now. Watch when I let go. And you can see that only that track rippled, everything else stays in place. So if you want everything else to stay in place, hold down the Alt or the Option key. And otherwise, rippling is your friend. Now, in addition to being able to trim from the beginning or the end of a clip, sometimes you want to slice down the middle. And you do that by just positioning the playhead where you want to slice. And then as you hover your mouse over the playhead, you can split the clip by clicking on that little scissors icon. Now, if nothing is selected on your timeline, when you click on that pair of scissors, everything gets sliced through at that point. I'm going to control Z or command Z, make that go away. But if I have a clip selected and then click on that scissors icon, look at what happens. Only that clip splits. 
So it's an important distinction. So once you've split a clip, of course, you can either remove what you've cut or you can trim it separate from the surrounding clips. But those are your basic moves here. Most of what you're doing when you're editing is simply arranging your clips and then getting rid of what you don't want, right? So understanding how to place clips on your timeline, how to insert into your timeline, how rippling works as you add or remove clips is the vast majority of what you're going to be doing as you video edit. So that's the basic of building out your timeline. Let's have some fun as we go into part four. We're going to look at transitions and then later on we'll look at adding some effects and even some titles to our movie. That's coming up in basic training for Adobe Premiere Elements.